I understand, but I still couldn't see the end. It's not entirely bad, but it's not the resulting work. Would you mind stepping in front of the mic here, please? I was. I wasn't going to make a statement because uh, obviously I'm distressed. I've been up with my client and we've talked for about a half hour and uh, he is less distressed than I and what we both look forward to is the next trial and in the next trial we will do better. You know it may hang again and may, may be acquitted but we're not going to lose. Now we know what their witnesses have said. We now know our strengths and our weaknesses. We won't be joined, you know, at the hip with a co-defendant who was obviously innocent. And the jury made contrast, obviously, between the evidence against Harris and the evidence against my client, you know, and it was 10 to one. And therefore I won't have that next trial. So October 4th comes, we'll set another trial date. Unfortunately, I have about four or five trials I've got to do before that, so I fear that it will be sometime, oh, like in March. So, Tony, this wasn't a win for you? Absolutely not. I expected far. I understood and I countenanced the prospect that it would hang, but not by two, not by two. You know, that, that, didn't justify, you know, all of the, from my perspective, the reasonable doubt that was inherent in this case. So I'm, I'm, I'm pained, I'm anguished, I'm frustrated, but God damn it, we will win next time. What is Derek saying? Derek uh, is getting very philosophic. He understands, you know, he, he's never been through criminal process. He's never been in jail. So he understands it more, and he, along with myself, you know, we want to do a bail motion. We'll do one at an appropriate time. I don't expect bail, which is a travesty in itself. But I don't think we'll get bail. We haven't gotten it on our previous, uh, you know, applications. And now they're going to say, oh, well, it was 10 to 2. You know, uh, he's more of a risk. And of course, he's never going to run away. He's no risk at all. But we'll do a bail motion. But sadly, he's going to sit in Santa Rita, which is a hell hole, you know. So, Tony, uh, what do you have to say to the 36 families out there who are obviously distraught by this verdict? Firstly, I've always had great compassion for the families. I understand their anguish. I understand, you know, their suffering. To lose a child in that fashion is something that's so traumatic that it can never be forgotten. I understand all of that. But they now have seen more of the case than they had seen previously. That was part of the rationale for setting aside the plea agreement which we had entered into. And therefore, that criteria has been met. So they should be less interested in a retrial. And maybe they will be, and maybe they won't. I think some of them, my God, we had a few sitting on our side, if you saw it. Uh, some of them, you know, uh, forgive, forget. Others will want revenge. So we, where is their children? How are they? How old are they now? And what's going on? Well, uh, the, the uh, eldest one is, you know, uh, I'm forgetting by like 12 or 13, and they're doing fabulous, completely fabulous. They're going to school, they're up near uh, Lakeport, the wife is a social worker, she's uh, you know making satisfactory money to support them. They've got a nice place there, and uh, they're, the, the family's thriving. Uh, sadly, obviously, there's never enough money, and uh, my client actually suffers because everything that he can gather together goes to his family to help them, you know, over this ordeal. All right, my friends, that's what I have, unless you have another question. What, what does um, Derek plan to do now? He's going to sit in Santa Rita, do what he's presently doing, art every day, reading, you know, voluminously, 
he has kind of graduated mentally into being an intellect. He said, oh, Tony, you know, I just read five books on, on and I'm forgetting some historical epic in the past. So um, he's self-improving. He's enhancing his uh, scholarship. He's doing art. And um, he's trying to put the case, you know, in perspective. Is that going to be released tonight? Oh, you're talking about Harris? No, Derek O'Brien. No, no. Of course Harris. not. Okay. Oh, of course not. No, no. Subject to a retrial. I'll talk about bail every day. Well, I mean, now that we're where we are today, are, are the attorneys able to talk about what happened with the two jurors that were let go? Is that gag over, right? Can you talk about that now? Can you tell us what happened? Yeah. I think that the gag order uh, is extinguished, she said, after a verdict. So I think I can. Tell but us, I, I, now I'm just going to put it in a nutshell. One juror consulted a fireman of her acquaintance. And the fireman told her words to the effect that if they had gone in as they did, we've always contended, in 2014, September 26 thereof, they would have, of necessity, had to report it. They would have, you know, required inspection. So it was something that helped our case, but it came from a non-witness. Comes from an extraneous source. She told everyone that, and that, is why she was thrown out, she admitted it. Then another person was thrown out because receiving the information, she was, you know, changed her opinion. And the third one was thrown out because she was, you know, conversing with it, entered into her uh, deliberations. So it's receiving, you know, uh, evidence, in quote, from an extraneous source completely prohibited completely prohibited. I don't know the answer to that. No, it comes from a fire uh, department official not connected with this case at all. It was a, a, a friend or a quasi friend of the juror. And she went to him to get information and then relayed that information to the jury. That was the heart of it. The family shouldn't have to go for a trial because this, this was the risk, no? When when they were the agreement, there were six years and nine years, and the risk of going to trial is that this will happen. So we you, took you a plea agreement that. not because we believed that they had evidence to prove guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. We took a plea agreement thinking it would alleviate the pain and suffering of all concerned. You know, for the victim's family to have to hear, you know, the manner of death, it's very agonizing. I don't think I would want it. I have five children. I think if one died like that, I don't think I would want to go in, you know, and, and hear all the grisly details, but that's what they wanted. No, no, no. You see, I got to hang. I'm going to hang this again at minimum. And we got a good shot. We have a much better shot. I always wanted to try it without Harris. I saw Harris, you know, as being quickly acquitted, you know, and they're going to contrast the evidence. And any, you know, common sense means that I'm going to be kind of... Uh, and how would I call it? Handicapped by the co-defendant's innocence. I, that won't occur next time. So my position very strongly right now is try your best to get him bail. Set a jury trial, you know, as quickly as I am available. And in the interim, prepare for trial. It's funny, I, I talked into my client, as I told you, this last half hour, and he said the exact thing, now we could use Harris as a witness for me. And I said, well, we'll see, he's already testified, but you know, maybe there's areas that that could happen. They are friendly, you know, they 
chat and kind of fraternize in San Quentin, so, yeah, and prior there too. And, you know, my client's not a bad guy. He said, I'm the one that, I'm glad that Harris got acquitted. I was the one responsible for bringing him, you know, into ghost ship. I said, don't blame yourself for that. He, you know, he came in voluntarily and, you know, was happy in the activity that he participated. But it was just a manifestation of my client's empathy. Do you think there's any chance of this guy will refile charges? No, uh, it's not refiling. It's just re, re, uh, re-trying. I don't think so. Not unintended to. See, if it was 10 to 2 the other way around, he could dismiss. 10 to 2 for acquittal. It was 10 to 2 for conviction. I don't think so. I think he'll be as anxious to go to trial as us, but there's an economic issue. It cost him a half million to try this case. Do they want to put that much more money into it when they know, as I know, they're not going to get a conviction next time? It'll hang or it'll be an acquittal. I don't think they want to risk all of that money, but I've always said this is a political case, and it goes from the mayor, my opinion, to, you know, the district attorney, and it has been used as a ruse in order to uh, insulate the county and the city from civil liability. That's always been, you know, part of the rationale of this prosecution from my perspective. A scapegoat so that, you know, the fire department and the police department, et cetera, et cetera, doesn't have to pay zillions to the victim's family. All right, my friend.